The famous public square in the heart of Siena is Piazza del Campo. There are 10 different entrances to the piazza via alleys and staircases and ramps and little lanes. And several of those alleys are a good place to get a quick bite to eat as you're entering the Campo. Even though the Campo is a little hidden from view from the main pedestrian lanes, you'll find that it's very easy to gain access. Nearly 500 feet wide and surrounded by shops, restaurants, and the towering Palazzo Publico, this is the very heart of town. El Campo symbolizes the government in various ways. One message the leaders proclaimed with this large square was that they would rule the city properly and were therefore not worried about a revolution or a gathering of large groups of people. The piazza is divided by brick lines into sections that represented the governing council of nine at the time it was paved in 1349, which some people feel today was the best government they ever had. Nine merchants and bankers ruled desiring to make themselves and everyone else rich, and with the theme that all were welcome to participate. The Council of Nine presented a very new kind of democratic message for the Middle Ages. And it worked so well that Siena became one of the richest cities in Europe. Like most of the rest of town, the surface here is slanted along the slope of a hill, adding an unusual dimension to this beautiful gathering place. Piazza del Campo was and remains today the principal public space of the historic center and is regarded as one of Europe's greatest medieval squares. It's renowned worldwide for its beauty and its architectural heritage. The Fonte Gaia, which means Fountain of Happiness, was built in 1419 as an endpoint of the system of conduits bringing water into the city center construction of the Palazzo Publico, or City Hall, began in the late 13th century in classic Sienese Gothic style, built of stone on the bottom level and brick on the upper floors, with crenellations, turrets, and the tall tower giving it the appearance of a fortified castle. Parts of the large structure still function as the City Hall today. If you just want a free, quick glimpse, you are welcome to walk into the inner courtyard no charge, surrounded by an impressive arcade with colorful coats of arms and offering a dramatic view up at the Mangia Tower, while other sections are open to the public as the Civic Museum. Twice a year, the Campo becomes an arena for a wild bareback horse race called the Palio, with about 30,000 screaming spectators crammed into the center and 20,000 more fans standing all around the outside and looking down from the windows and balconies. These festivities are held every July 2nd and August 16th, and they've been going on for about the past 800 years. The shape of the piazza has been compared to a horseshoe, a half moon, a seashell, and an amphitheater, and yet it's commonly called a square. The open site was a marketplace established before the 13th century on a sloping site near the meeting point of the three hillside communities that coalesced to form Siena, the Castellari, the San Martino, and the Camolia. It's a great place to have an outdoor meal at one of the many sidewalk restaurants that are around it. You're eating here more for the ambience than for the quality of the food. You'd probably find some better food at a better price in the little back streets away from the tourist area, but you can't beat this location, especially in the evening, as we'll be showing you. The piazza is lined by palaces, formerly housing the noble families of old Siena, the Sansedoni, the Piccolomini, Saracini, and others, all built to a fairly uniform height and appearance. Regarding the timing of your visit to Siena, you want to get here in the afternoon so you can walk around, enjoy the town, go into the cathedral, enjoy the late afternoon passeggiata, the stroll on the main street, and then at twilight come into the campo for dinner. You will find this experience of eating an evening meal at twilight 
sunset on the Campo is going to be one of the highlights of your trip, no question about it. Sit back and relax, enjoy the ambiance, have a carafe of wine, have some antipasti, have some salad, eat a main course, don't worry about the pricing or the quality. It's going to be fairly reasonable and just enjoy this environment and experience. You will probably look back on that moment in future years as one of the highlights of all your travels. And then after dinner, you can stroll back up the main street heading to the bus stop. There are plenty of buses heading back to Florence in the evening. Or maybe you're staying in Siena, better yet. That would make things much more comfortable. Late afternoon and early evening are always the best time for strolling in any Italian town's main streets because then the locals are out in force enjoying their passeggiata, the promenade, see and be seen. The easiest way to get back to Florence is take a bus. It's an hour and 10 minute ride and the bus stop's easy to reach. It's on the edge of Siena's historic district. If you are staying in Florence, another option to get back there is taking a train. It is two hours, a little bit longer than taking a bus, but you'll find the train schedules are pretty convenient also. And you can just take a taxi from the center of Siena down to the train station. Otherwise, it's a half hour walk. So take a taxi and you'll be home that evening with great memories. We have other movies about Siena, visiting the great cathedral and walking through the many little lanes of this wonderful medieval town. Have a look at our YouTube channel and our website where you'll find more than a thousand travel movies.